First question is from A. Wenman. How often should you sh switch up your exercises used for trigger sessions? Should you always be doing trigger sessions or phase them in and out of your daily routine? I'm curious, and Sal, you're kind of you're obviously you're the the creator of this. Um, how you do this? I personally don't. Um, I don't really switch mine up because the way I look at it is the it's more about facilitating recovery and just sending a signal to that muscle. Um, I really don't put a lot of energy in trying to be creative with doing a bunch of different exercises all the yeah, time. Yeah, it doesn't make a, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So for for people who are listening who are, aren't familiar with trigger sessions, essentially these are short uh, eight to ten minute workouts uh, with typically with resistance bands and body weight, and they're low intensity. You're 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 just trying to get a little bit of a pump, um, and the idea is to do these on off days. So if I hit my chest yesterday. Today, I'm not hitting chest. I could still do two or three trigger sessions, okay? So two or three eight-minute workouts throughout the day where I'm giving my chest a little bit of a pump. So I might do some push-ups. I might do band, you know, fly, something like that. Now, the idea is exactly what you're saying, Adam, is to continue to send a muscle-building signal and to speed up uh, recovery. So it really doesn't make a huge difference. It, really, what you want to pay attention to is don't do movements that are too intense. Mm -hmm. So uh, trigger sessions that are real intense, now you're going to start to impair recovery rather than facilitate recovery, and it starts to kind of get in your own way. So the low-intensity movements are best. Bands, I love bands because they don't damage the body as much as weights do uh, or as much as body weight exercises do or machines. They're super convenient. Um, and I like to do trigger sessions for gen just kind of the whole body, kind of mm -hmm. send that signal to the whole body. It's one of the more effective, I guess, uh, ways to augment your workouts that I've ever seen in my entire life. Anytime I've ever been consistent with trigger sessions, I see my body change very, very quickly. Like within a week, um, I notice a difference. So, uh, so that's essentially, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to change up the exercises too much. If you're doing trigger sessions for your upper body, you could do the same ones all the time, as long as you're getting a little bit of a pump and you're not overdoing it and you're doing them frequently, because that's the important thing is doing frequent, then you're good. Yeah, this just takes me back to when we were like first starting a podcast and I was going through that transformation and uh, you guys are trying to coach me on uh, trigger sessions and I was definitely overdoing it with intensity is just like an old habit that where you just go into a workout and you just want to smash your way through it and, and do all the reps and okay what do I, what else do I do but it wasn't really monitoring the amount of intensity that I was applying into that and not reaping the benefits of it really it's it's supposed to be there to recover and charge you in going to the next workout I think that's the biggest mistake I see people make yes. so yeah. most people very, very that common. are trying to apply this it, they are they're treating it like a like a workout workout mm -hmm. like i just i don't think of it like a workout it's like a quick pump mm -hmm. right and it should be and i even like push-ups sometimes can be too damaging right if you don't do if you can't do 20 push-ups very well like doing three or four sets of 20 push-ups you're probably gonna get sore from that the idea is not to get sore from your trigger sessions it's it's more of a recovery thing than than it is that so I mean, I'm doing very basic band movements to just send some blood and fluid in there for you know eight to ten minutes real quick. That's a hundred. That's hundred uh, percent. You're just yeah. trying to get a pump. Like to use your example of push-ups. Uh, you know, I could probably rep out. I don't know. I've never. I haven't repped out push-ups in a long time. I'm sure I could do 50, 60, maybe seventy push-ups. Uh, so, but maybe for, or maybe three hundred. I don't know. But for my, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. I could do. Uh, definitely put it this way. I, could, limit. I know I could do at least fifty, right, or yeah. more. My trigger sessions would be about 12 to 15 push-ups. Right. Just to give you an example right. two of, or three sets of 12 to 15. Yes, and again, I'm just squeezing. I'm trying to get a pump in the muscle. That's the focus. The focus is not, can I get a workout? Can I hammer my body? And so now, how would you do this in your in your routine? Well, if you're following you know, three full-body workouts, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then you would do trigger sessions on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. You could do them. Mm. You want to do them frequently, uh, up to three times in a day. You want to space them out. What if you do a body part split, right? What if you do a split where Monday I hit chest, shoulders, and triceps, and Wednesday I hit back and biceps, and then I hit legs on Wednesday and repeat type of deal? Well, then you could do trigger sessions for the body parts uh, that you're not working that day. So if I did chest, shoulders, and triceps yesterday, today's back and biceps, my normal workout is the back and bicep workout, and then later on I do a trigger session for all the other stuff. Right? I also like using them similar to how if I like our um, Maps Aesthetic programs designed with focus sessions. So a lot of times I'll do trigger sessions just on the muscle groups that I'm trying to develop. I'm trying to accelerate growth there. Like you have, if you have lagging body parts, mm -hmm. let's say you're 
shoulders are underdeveloped to your arms, then my trigger sessions may always be shoulder work. Mm -hmm. It might just, I'm just trying to sit because I'm trying to get those to catch up to other body parts. Um, this is where it can be kind of moldable. It doesn't have to necessarily mean you have to go through every single muscle and hit it two to three times a day on those off days. You know, if you're really trying to develop an area that's lagging, like that's a great thing to do trigger sessions for. Is yeah. Focus I, on those muscles. And I've experimented mm -hmm. with, because uh, I trained lots of clients and had them experiment with this before I ever put it in uh, MAPS Anabolic. And, uh, I, you know, I've, I've experimented with weights, with body weight, with machines, and with bands. And for everybody, bands was the best. Bands mm -hmm. just produced, for trigger sessions, bands produced the best results. The least so damaging. It is. So just stick with that.